Happy New Year, everybody. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Oh, listen. I flubbed a dub yesterday. No kidding. Yeah, I did. Which dub? I was? really did it. <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, I said about Keith Moore's great churches. One of them in Branson. Yeah. One of them in Tallahassee. It's not in Tallahassee. It's in Sarasota. <laughs> well, Amen. A, a church in Tallahassee probably had a good crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some church in Tallahassee did. <laughs> Praise God. Well, there's, I'll tell you one thing. There's a there's fabulous ministry in Tallahassee. It's Doug Wingate, Dr. Doug Wingate and Life University. Praise God. And now Gloria and I, um, have honorary doctorate degrees from Oral Roberts University, but we have earned doctorates from Life University. They took our life's work, the books that we've written, the, the, the tapes and so forth, and, the, and then came up into the CDs and the DVDs and and the, the professors there at Life University uh, actually graded them. And so we have earned doctorates. And, you know, we don't publicize that, but... <clears throat> and I got the paper to prove it. <laughs> well, but you don't have to call me Dr. Gloria unless you just want to. <laughs> Okay, Doc, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Doc. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't, isn't television just absolutely fabulous? You get to talk about all of these wonderful things. Father, we thank you today. This wonderful year has just begun, and we're thrilled. We're thrilled with you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I'm thinking about the valley of the shadow of death. We go through that valley and fear no evil because Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are the biggest thing in the valley. Praise and we thank you for you've given us victory over death. And we praise you. Thank and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We're talking about, of course, we're talking about 2020, and we talked about um, the, the prophecy of Joel that Peter actually preached on the day of Pentecost and praying about this year and, and so forth, uh, that 2020, of course, it, it, just, it just lends itself to vision. And, I, and praying about that, and I heard the Lord say, this will, this will be the time of great manifestation of dreams and visions. Well, in fact, let's, let's go over there and read that. I, I, I was going to read this here in, in uh, 1 Timothy, but we're coming right back to that just as quick as we, uh, as we get through with this. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. And um, where Peter said, on the day of Pentecost, Peter standing up with the 11 and the 14th verse lifted up his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day or nine o'clock in the morning. This is that which Joel, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, it shall come to pass in 2020, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. This is the time of greater manifestations of dreams and visions where, where, um, I'm talking about in the supernatural, yes. prophetic dreams, That's right. 
uh, we're, we're going to hear of some, some very, uh, we're going to experience, let me put it that way. Yeah. We're going to experience. It didn't say you're young prophets and old prophets. It said you're young men. That's right. That's right. And old men. Mm-hmm. Now, there, there's going to be a, 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 a intense intensive increase of manifestations Praise God. of prophetic dreams, insights, concepts in that world. Good. But now you really, really must be very aware because the devil calls dreams mm-hmm. and visions. Make absolutely sure you're listening to me out there. You make, if you have a dream like that, you don't, you tell anybody, don't you say anything about it until you check it out with the word of God. If it doesn't match the word of God, or if you don't know, keep your mouth shut about it till you find out. Cause he'll come along and, and with, with that, you know, he can manifest himself as an angel of light and actually appear and say something like, it's just not God's will to heal you just now, mm. but be ready because one of these days it's going to come to pass. That's a lie from hell. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 You just check it out for yourself. That's right. He did not say that. Jesus did not say that when he was ministering in the earth. He didn't tell anybody to wait. He didn't tell anybody it wasn't God's will. He, d- he just said, be it done unto you according to your faith. Your faith made you whole. Glory to God. Not one apostle ever told anybody to wait. Not one time, not the apostle Paul, not Silas, not, not Barnabas. Amen. Amen. It's not in there. It's his will for everybody to be absolutely well, absolutely prosperous, even as your soul prospers. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. And dreams and visions come in the soulish realm. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So just be aware. Don't get all that up in the air about it and excited about it. It's all right there. You're supposed to do that. Amen. Amen. Now, it is, however, the intercessors, the prayers that have access more in the spirit than people that don't take time to get in the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who walk in the spirit instead of the flesh Mm -hmm. or walk after the spirit instead of the flesh. In one sense of the word, we are in the spirit. But is that where you're living? Remember what Jesus said? If you abide in me and my word abides in you, if my word is alive in you, then you ask what you will and it will be done unto you. Amen. So, Stepping out in the spirit. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now you step out in there. You can't do that praying in your natural language because you're, you're praying words coming out of your mind. You have to be praying in tongues to pray in the spirit as the apostle Paul said, I will pray with my understanding, 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, I will pray with my understanding, I will pray with my spirit. He's talking about praying, actually praying in tongues. I will sing in my spirit, by my spirit. I like what the classic Amplified says there. And I will sing in my understanding. Yes. Now notice he said, I will. Yes. 
it, it's not, you have to wait until some kind of, <laughs> oh, there's, there's some kind of ecstasy come on you. No, now people thought that, but, but just not knowing what the Bible said about it. But, and, and I, I'm, I'm not knocking that at all, but, but I, I am, it needs to be put in, in its place. He said, I will pray with my understanding and I will pray in the spirit. It's an act of your will. Somebody said to my spiritual father, Oral Roberts, you just sounds to me like, and I'm talking about that because he was talking about praying in tongues and interpreting it back at a, and, and, and he, he walked in that. In fact, the, all, you remember what the Bible said, God gave David the plans for the temple. God gave Oral Roberts the plans for the campus of Oral Roberts University. And he got it by praying in tongues and then interpreting back to himself and the Spirit of God through that avenue gave him the design of all those buildings. That's the way he got it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Now, uh, it's in the Spirit where things happen. And you step off in there. Well, I didn't feel anything. Forget feelings. Your body doesn't have anything to do with this. Mm -hmm. This is over. We don't walk by, we walk by faith, not, not by sight. So you, when you're, you're praying in the spirit, and I, 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 do, I do most of my praying for my partners and interceding for the country and so forth. While I'm talking about this, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And, and I do most of it in tongues, in, in, the, in, the, in the spirit. Now, I exhort therefore that first of all, say that, First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings, well, of course, they had kings back in those days, but now the next, the next phrase explains that. And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will, it is His will, yes, it is. that all men be saved yes, it is. and come to the knowledge of the truth for or that there is but one God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's one God yes, there and one mediator between God and men, the man. And every time I pray that I come down on that. He's the man. Glory to God. He's my man. He's the man, the Messiah, the anointed Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified of in due time. And it strikes me, and many times I say this, and praise God, this ministry and, and, and all that it does is a voice of that testimony. Yes. Praise yes. God, yes. Amen. amen, that there's one God and one mediator, and he yes. gave himself yes. as a ransom for all. Hallelujah. Praise if that don't Jesus. set you on fire, your wood's worth, brother. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, notice the intercession starts out for all men. Then it goes from that to all that are in authority. Why? That the church live in peace and honesty and godliness. And I'm very, very sad to say most Christians have no idea that verse is even in the Bible. And they certainly don't do it first of all. 
They start out with, oh God, oh God. That ought to come later. Amen. Amen. Somebody asked Smith Wigglesworth, you know, I'm telling you, Smith Wigglesworth had uh, documented cases Mm -hmm. of the dead being raised. Numbers of cases. I talked to a very good friend of mine, he's in heaven now, but uh, Charles Duncombe, he was was, um, an Englishman. And um, uh, Smith Wigglesworth was a Yorkshireman and and, uh, from England. And he was preaching in his church. And they had a, (laughs) I mean, um, Professor Duncombe told me this personally. And he said, Brother Copeland, this man will frighten you. (laughs) (laughs) And so (laughs) there's someone, they were having a a funeral and a wake and um, and in in the home there. And and of course, Wigglesworth didn't know him. But there was, and, and actually it, it wasn't part of, of uh, Professor Duncombe's uh, congregation, but it was someone in the, his congregation was in that family. And anyway, he went to pay his respect. And Wigglesworth went with him. Two French doors in there. And, now I'm, and I'm, I'm saying all this because Wigglesworth was an intercessor. He was, oh man, prayed all the time. And um, they had French doors, and the, the coffin was behind those French doors. The family's all sitting in there. And, and, and Wigglesworth just walked, they just walked in there, and Wigglesworth, now he's a prayer now, right. an intercessor, spent enormous, a totally uneducated. God taught him how to read the Bible. He'd never read any publication in his life except the Bible. Never went to school a day in his life. He just walked right in there, pulled that guy out of that coffin and stood him up in the corner. And he had a booming voice. In the name of Jesus. Live! And turned him loose and he just slid down. He picked him up and put him in the corner again said the same thing again, just slid down. He picked him up and just slammed him into the corner. <laughs> and, he, and he walked Wigglesworth to the door. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Documented cases in hospitals. Now I brought all that up to say this. They asked Wigglesworth, he went home to be with the Lord in, in uh, 1946, I believe it was, in his 80s. And uh, he, uh, they asked him, how long do you pray? Oh, he said about uh, 15 minutes. They were shocked. Mm-hmm. But he said, I don't usually go 15 minutes without praying. That's right. <laughs> so he prayed all the time. He, he prayed in the Spirit all the time. That's right. Amen. You can pray in tongues in the grocery store. If you've trained yourself in that and it's, it is very, very important to your life, then you're praying in tongues under your breath, yeah. yes. speaking to yourselves, yes. psalms and hymns yes. and spiritual songs. Yes. Yes. Well, Brother Copeland, do you think he heard me? Do you think he heard you when you prayed to yourself in English or whatever language you speak in Espanol? Huh? Well, of course he did. He's in here, sweetheart. Well, they don't feel like my prayer got any higher than the roof. Feelings. It didn't need to get any higher than this. If he's in here. The one that's hearing your prayer is right here. He, he's, he's not there. But Jesus at the right hand of the Father ever maketh intercession for us. But our advocate and our standby and our comforter and our teacher and our strengthener, the Father that dwelleth within, representing Jesus is the healer. 
Come on. Come on. Oh, praise God. I'm telling you, I don't preach me happy again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, oh, where was it? <laughs> Amen. To be testified of in due time. Now, let's go over to the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. This is extremely interesting. Now, the, the book of Ephesians is not but six chapters. It, just take the time and just sit down and read it like a letter. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and listen to it. It's a letter written to you. And, uh, I'm, and for instance, starting with that first verse, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Now, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So we're talking about living long on the earth for years and years and years and years and years and years. I would see long for long life. He'll satisfy you and, and so forth and so on. And you know, you've, most people think about 70 or 80 or so. But no, 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 no. That, that in the 90th Psalm where it says uh, uh, three score and 10, four score by strength. That no, no, the, God didn't say that. He didn't. No, he didn't promise us that. Now, most people think he did. That was a curse that came on those people in the desert. Yeah. Never was his will in the first place. No, it wasn't. Never was. Amen. Genesis 6, 3. Wouldn't that be right in the first of the book? Yes. Only yes. three verses into the sixth chapter of Genesis. Yes. Yep. He said the days of man shall be 120 years. Amen. Now, God said that one. Yeah. Yes. So when, when, I, when I learned that, and, and the Lord asked me if I would believe for that. And then, of course, whatever he asked is my command. Mm -hmm. Well, then I began to see that's what the whole Bible is referring to. Because mm -hmm. God said it in the first, the first book in the Bible. Yes. So then that, that flows all the way through the 91st Psalm. It flows all the way through the New Testament. Praise God. Yes. Are you seeing that? Yes. Amen. And we're out of time. Tim, how do you do that? <laughs> You're doing that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't get there. We'll just have to wait till tomorrow. Praise God. Did you get anything out of this today? Praise God. <laughs> you wait till tomorrow. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.